Okay, so here we're going to look at um, two traits in organisms rather than just looking at a single trait like eye color, brown eyes or blue eyes. So here um, we're going to use two different genes. We have the R gene and the T gene, whether that codes for height or um, dimples or it doesn't really matter. Uh, but here we can see that this diploid organism is heterozygous for both traits. So we actually call this individual a dihybrid a hybrid for two traits, but we are diploid organisms. So when this individual goes to make gametes, like what kind of gametes are possible? So here you have um, like Mendel's law states that the alleles are gonna separate. So in each gamete, there will only be one R and there will be one T in each gamete. Like they're gonna separate Mendel's law of segregation. So let's go ahead and draw like if these were the, the homologous chromosomes, so you can see one chromosome has the dominant allele, one chromosome has the recessive allele. And then we have the um, homologous pairs that have the T gene, whatever that is coding for. Now these two traits are not linked. They are on separate chromosomes. So then if we were to have, let me just use a different color real fast, sorry. So if we were to have like, um, meiosis happen, right, and the cells divide, uh, like uh, metaphase one, anaphase one, etc. we would end up, these gametes over here would have a dominant allele of each kind, and these gametes would have a recessive, oh, sorry, a recessive allele for each one. Uh, but however, we know that due to Mendel's second law of independent assortment, that this is also possible. So uh, when the homologous pairs align along the metaphase plate, you could easily have this recessive allele on the left-hand side. So now when, these, um, when gametes are formed, some gametes could end up with a dominant R and a recessive T, and then a recessive R and a dominant T. So when we look at what gametes can this individual make, these are their possibilities. Due to Mendel's law of segregation as well as independent assortment for genes that are on separate chromosomes. So now, when we go to set up a dihybrid cross, uh, what we're saying in a Punnett square is, um, what are the different possibilities of offspring from two parents? Like what is the probability that a certain event will happen. So we need to figure out what are their gametes to know the likelihood that two will come together. So if we have two parents that are both dihybrids, um, really it is possible for this dominant R, oops, to end up in a gamete with a dominant T. But it is also possible that the dominant R will end up in a gamete with a recessive T. Now, it's possible that the recessive R will end up in a gamete with the dominant T, and that the recessive R could also end up in a gamete with a recessive T. So, keeping in mind that due to Mendel's law of segregation, each gamete only has one allele for each trait. That's why you only see one R and one T. But Mendel's law of independent assortment states that traits that are not on the same chromosomes in uh, like are inherited independently of each other and do not influence how they end up in gametes. So all of these combinations are equally likely in this um, individual's gametes. Now this uh, genotype of parent two is the same. So we're just gonna go ahead and write these possibilities of the gametes along the side. So when you go to fill in this Punnett square, uh, I like to start by doing the R's first and then the T's. So if this, let's say this is an egg and this is a sperm, uh, if this was fertilized, they'd be homozygous dominant for the R trait, but also homozygous dominant for the T trait. And then you just go across. So here, homozygous dominant for R's, but heterozygous for T's, heterozygous, and then homozygous dominant, heterozygous, and heterozygous. So you wanna be careful um, and don't rush because right there, I even like second guessed myself. So then um, you just continue as if they were, um, like the same rules of filling in like those single um, Punnett squares.
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this. But now I'm rushing because you're watching and I'm afraid I'm going to make a mistake, so hopefully not. Okay, so when we uh, eventually finish our Punnett square, uh, we can look for an expected ratio. And this will be true for all dihybrid crosses. So in a dihybrid cross, which is what we did here, dihybrid, a hybrid for both traits, we should expect a phenotypic ratio of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 in the offspring. So let's go ahead and see. We're going to look for um, individuals who are dominant for both traits. So if I look for um, individuals who are dominant for both traits, I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So here, for individuals that are dominant for both traits, I found my nine. Now I'm going to look for individuals that are dominant for the R trait, but recessive for the T trait. So dominant for the R trait and recessive for the T, I find that there are three of those. And then I'm going to look for individuals that are recessive for the R trait, but dominant for the T. Oops, my green pen does, let's use green. And that's where this three comes from. And then we're going to look at, well, what are the chances of like a homozygous recessive uh, for both traits? And there's only one. So if you were to ask, like, what is the probability of an offspring having um, the dominant trait for R, but the recessive trait for T, you would get three out of 16. Or being homozygous recessive for both would be one out of 16. And so that is how you set up a dihybrid cross and where that 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 phenotypic ratio comes from. Now, another type of cross, though, that has a different expected ratio would be this type of cross, where you have a dihybrid cross with homozygous recessive for both traits. So we already figured out previously how to um, set up this. Uh, like gametes that are possible. But now let's look at this parent. This parent, every single gamete, is only going to have recessive allele. So this is nice, like a nice shortcut when you are doing uh, Punnett squares with a parent with this genotype. Because look, when we go to uh, set it up, hold on, let me make sure I don't make mistakes. Almost. Okay, now if I were to complete this row, it would be the same, right? Like all of these rows are just going to be repeats of this. So you really only have to fill in that first row on the table. And we see here there's a 25% chance that the offspring will be dominant for both traits, a 25% chance that the offspring will be dominant for the first, for the R trait and recessive for that one, a 25% chance recessive for the R but dominant for the T, and a 25% chance recessive for both. So the phenotypic ratio here is a 1 to 1 to 1 to 1. There's a 25% chance and equal likelihood that any of these phenotypes are possible. So that is how you set up a dihybrid cross and how it's connected to Mendel's laws of uh, independent assortment and Mendel's law of segregation. All right, good job.